And I think we're live. So welcome everybody to Tola Data's Digital m and for Empowerment and Equality. We're absolutely delighted to have you here. So as custom, um, we're going to leave just a few moments for some others to tune in from where they are in case they're having any difficulties. But what we might do in the meantime is we would heartily uh, welcome you to maybe uh, talk to us in the comment section, let us know perhaps where you're tuning in from, your role, or even maybe a little bit about your organization, perhaps the work that you're doing on gender equality, maybe even work that you're hoping to do in future, because we would love to learn more about your organizations. And I think I can speak on behalf of the team that are working on this webinar today. Um, but gender equality for us is a subject I think we hold quite close to our hearts. And perhaps not only, oh, am I on mute? Hi, Andrew, I see you're in the comments as well. Can you hear me okay, Anya? I can hear you fine. Hi, Andrew. Perfect. Nice to see you, Andrew. Maybe you, you're on mute. So um, I hope that it's not the case for everyone else, but do let us know. Um, but yeah, as I, I was, I was a, as I was saying, um, I think for us, um, not only because we're women ourselves, but in our line of work, I think we do see how you know inequalities are affecting women globally in many different facets of life. And this can be in the workplace with salary inequality. This can be domestically speaking with you know unpaid care work. Also in terms of education, where there's a lot of barriers and obstacles, and even with very, you know, primal essential needs such as food and just being hungry enough to, to go through the day. So it's really fantastic to be speaking with everyone that's working um, on behalf of these issues and who are proactively getting out there to teach women skills, providing them with information to really allow them to unlock their potential. So I guess with this webinar, we're really hoping that uh, by showing you some some tools for digitization that this will enable you to you know go further with these projects and you know close in that close that inequality gap um, as soon as we can so uh, we're absolutely delighted to have you here and with that I think we can even just start this uh, presentation so before we begin, we might just do a quick introduction of the team that are here today. Uh, I'm going to start with myself. Um, my name is Zive. I'm originally from Ireland, you might guess by the name, uh, but I reside currently here in Berlin, which is also the headquarters of Tola Data. Uh, in Tola Data, I work as a customer success executive, and at my time, in my time uh, in Tola Data, I've been working with many different fantastic organizations working on many different issues and in different sectors such as gender equality at all different stages of their m and &E process. And I'm hoping today with my presentation to show you a lot of very powerful and dynamic tools um, that will really allow you just to optimize and make your projects the best they can be. So I'm going to pass over the mic now to a colleague of mine and perhaps she can just give a brief intro of herself and maybe as well what she might be uh, presenting to us today. Of course, thank you very much, Saiv. Um, just to note, I can see in the comments there, um, Hannah said she can hear us correctly, but if anybody else can't, let us know or let us know to slow down. Um, to begin, my name is Anya. I'm another customer success executive here at Tola Data. Um, I suppose my background kind of came from more volunteering with NGOs, and then I came to the m &E side of things. So I think it's very interesting to come at it from that angle because I didn't have a whole pile of experience in m and &E. So today I will be doing the demo on the platform. Um, and I think that goes to show how intuitive the software is. So wherever you are on your m and &E journey, I think it's very accessible. Um, the demo we'll be showing today is a look at female education. So we'll be starting at looking at young adolescent girls in education and then how that transfers into adulthood and training and then going through some mentorship pro programs and then finally hopefully getting some managerial positions and just tracking the progress of all of that and um, just to add as well I'm also Irish that's the um, name <laughs> so um, yeah I'm also in Berlin in our offices here and with that I'll pass back to Saif 
Perfect. Very nice, Lenny. I'm looking forward to that. So also in our comment section, uh, you might like to know that our veteran webinar presenter, Hannah, is there and ready to take any questions if you have them. Thanks, Anya. Uh, she's our head of sales and accounts. So if you do have any burning questions, she is definitely the person to ask. And for with regards to the rest of the Tole Data team, we are also in Berlin, but we do have um, parts of our team in Kenya, Guatemala, and Amsterdam. So we're quite an international bunch uh, with many different um, areas of experience in M&E and in charity work. But I, I think uh, we're all united in our hopes to, you know, learn more about different charities and help them work in the best way that they can. So um, I'm going to briefly now cover some of the points that we're going to be looking at today. And we're going to be starting off with the with why is m and &E important? And of course, um, initially, it might seem like a very basic question. But since m and &E is now something that is being required by more and more donors, we really need to reflect on why that is and where did we come from from there. Next, we'll look at why we use digital tools and what tools are out there. Then we'll move on to how to choose your digital tools. So there we'll be giving you some criteria, some questions you might pose to yourself in order for this to be the most adapted to your projects. Uh, we'll swing by Anya's uh, demo and show you how to bring all of this data together in one place. Then with a brief detour, I'll tell you how to, you know, uh, use some techniques to push your results further and to, you know, demonstrate these results in a very clear way. And Anya will then concretely show you some features to aggregate, disaggregate and how to put together a really lovely dashboard. And then finally, we'll have our Q&A, and that will be the time if you have any questions that pop into your head during the course of this presentation that you can definitely ask us then. So just before we begin with the content itself, um, we would love to, you know, have a connection with you during this presentation. You know, we might be the ones doing the pr presentation, but we do want to hear feedback from you because that is how our platform, that is how we as a, a company like to learn and like to, you know, introduce new features. So if you can head over now to menti.com with the code 18499702, or even use the QR code. This will allow us to send over some um, quizzes and allow you to you know, enter in some questions. And it will make it a lot more fun, I, I'm sure for you, just uh, to be more involved in you know, the discussion that we have today. So perhaps also Hannah can pop this into the, the comment section just to make it a bit easier, but keep this um, in a separate browser and have it open definitely for this um, next slide because we will be asking you a question following it. So as I mentioned, we're just going to be covering why is monitoring and evalu evaluation important? And we have selected four reasons. Of course, this is definitely not exhaustive, but for the Tola Data team, these are definitely ones that for us are quite, quite important. So if we start off now with better transparency and accountability, this is essentially um, trust, you know, trust in the way things run in your company internally and also for people that are, you know, observing you externally. And it is so important to have those lines of trust so that your project works the best way it can. In the past, you know, you used, um, you know, different, there was many projects that had been ruined by mismanagement, by a lack of transparency, and this really broke down morale within the company and also with your lines externally. So that's why it's so important to be setting up a system that allows you to show, track and monitor who's been inputting this data, modifying it so that you can you know, cultivate this relationship of trust with everyone, especially your donors who, if they're inv invested emotionally, will definitely be more inclined to invest than financially in future. And then next of all, we have the improve in decision-making. I think we can all agree that the best decisions are made with data-driven you know, um, facts in mind. So you know, in the past, certain decisions had to be made with a lack of data, very sparse, and this can really disorient or distort essentially, you know, the decisions that you make. It can really put your project off track and it's just really not going to reap the benefits of the project you're putting, you know, or your initiatives that you're putting forward. So this is why by having a system that gives you this 
excellent, very rich data that you can make decisions with confidence that are based on reality and concrete evidence and not based on this distorted data that you may have had before. Nextly, we have ensure resources are used efficiently. Again, when we didn't have a system set up, it got to be very difficult to ensure that different parts of our projects and initiatives were being financed, were being supported, and were being looked after properly. But now with systems that are going to allow you to see you know, different trends and patterns, this is going to really help you to identify, well, which areas do I need to invest more in? Which ones are going to give me more long-term benefits? Um, and again, this will just make sure that everything goes and is channeled in the correct way. And this ties in again also to our last point here, which is the identification of problems early on. And, you know, it was it was quite difficult for us in the past, you know, to see these issues. And often it was maybe at the end of the project that we might realize, oh, there, you know, there was actually problems from the beginning that we didn't identify. But with these digital tools, what they enable you to do is not only to, you know, identify problems in the here and now, but it also allows you to forecast and, you know, deviate if, you know, you can see upcoming problems in the future. So those were our four main um, reasons why we believe monitoring and evaluation is important. However, if you're on menti.com, and now you might be on the Totally Data website or on YouTube, um, head to your menti.com um, browser now and have a vote on which one you think is most important. Um, of course, there's many others. And if you have different reasons for why it's important, please put them down in the comments. Um, but if I leave you a few seconds, we might even just flick up that Mentimeter and see if we've got any uh, results. So I'll ask my colleague Hannah, who's in charge of the Menti presentation here. Oh, lovely. We have a few here already. Excellent. So I think among all of these different, um, yeah, different answers, we definitely see data-driven decision-making as one of the most important. And I think for us as Tola Data, we definitely also believe that data is so critical and it's so important in the faith we have in our projects and also the confidence that we have in our decisions that really help us to, you know, make the most out of our different projects. And we also see transparency and accountability also really important for sure improved project performance, definitely, and efficient use of resources. Excellent, perfect. Thank you for, for commenting and uh, reacting to that, guys. That's great to see. Um, so we might now flip back. Excellent, thank you, Hannah. And we'll head on to the next slide. So we just have a few different graphs. I think we can have a look over. And um, again, keep an eye on the Mentimeter. Another question will be coming your way and we'll want your opinion on some data collection tools. So have a, keep it open. So now, as you might be seeing, you'll see a man about to brace himself going into a hurricane of data. And this is something I think definitely m and &E specialists can sympathize with when you have piles and piles of paper that hasn't been organized in months, if not years, and it can be absolutely overwhelming. And although this is a satirical image, um, I think we can all empathize with the fact that sometimes this work just seems like it's endless, it's overwhelming, and it's just never gonna get done. But we're hoping today that you can see with these digital tools that this is definitely something that can be made a lot more efficient and a lot less scary. So if we now move on here to why we use digital tools, and I hope these reasons will definitely convince you because, um, it, they're really so transformative to your work. And if we start now on the first point here, we have improved data quality. Like the faith that you have in your data is so important again for all these decisions that you're gonna be making within your project. And in the past, when we've used paper-based methods to you know, make decisions, the issue is that these paper-based me me um, methods can cause a lot of inaccuracies, they can cause accumulated errors, there's a lot of missing data associated with paper-based things if you lose these pages. Also, this information can also be lost on you know, different computers, for example. And then again, you're not just getting the full view of this data. And you know, this data is also not data you can rely on. And for that reason, that's why it's so important to be using digital tools because 
it's a lot more difficult to um, make errors on digital tools. And additionally, there's a lot of prompts on these tools to um, maybe warn you if something's not adding up correctly or if it's not really fitting the format. It's allowing you to implement best practices to get the best quality data. And therefore it's data you can rely on. Now, nextly, we have data automation. For this reason alone, I definitely recommend getting digital tools because it's saving you valuable time. And with charities and initiatives and everything that you're doing, everyone is a bit um, time starved. And if you can help automate these processes via digital tools, you know, by helping you do autom automated calculations, um, you know, automated results, automated dashboards, it's again, giving you back the time that you need to do all of the important work that you're doing. Thirdly, we have real-time insights. Now this is really empowering because in the past, you know, when you had data collectors going all across to, of the country in different regions collecting data, you might have to wait weeks, if not months, to get this essential data that you need to actually make real decisions. And, you know, if you're missing data or you're waiting on data, then you can't really make data that's going to reflect or be the most beneficial to your beneficiaries. But now with digital tools, you have a streamlined way of getting all of this data into one place and making simultaneous decisions that are going to positively impact your projects. So again, this is a really nice empowering feature that digital tools bring. Now, our fourth point here is accessibility. In the past, when you were in remote locations with your beneficiaries, you often had to, you know, note down this information. And then when the projects finish, you'd head into maybe the city where you can note it down either in a report or you can put it online on Excel, for example. But then as you, as you can see, the problem is very clear. You're being taken away from, from the target beneficiaries. And also it's kind of too late to kind of really get the, the great results that you need. And with digital tools, they have offline capabilities or capabilities to work with very low connectivity. And what this enables you to do is to be always with your beneficiaries, to be able to use this information in real time and to implement the best practices and the most latest technology to make the biggest difference. And, you know, no longer does this remoteness have to be a huge disadvantage, but it can really, you know, be the place where you get the best information. And fifthly, we have um, best practices. Um, and this really has to do with standards and standards are very important for you to have in your organization. As an M&E specialist, I'm sure it's very difficult to, you know, train a lot of different um, colleagues how to, you know, input data correctly. And this is why with many softwares, again, they have certain prompts that allow the users to put in data that is, um, you know, in the correct format, that they understand how to collect it properly. And again, this is increasing data quality, and therefore this is a strengthening and reinforcing the, the better decisions that you're going to make. And then our final reason that we have here is knowledge management and data retention. Or we could say this is kind of bringing all your data together. In the past, you know, when you've had consultants or m and &E specialists, it was oftentimes only them who had access to, you know, the wealth of data. And so many issues can happen that then will, will prevent you from, you know, accessing this data. The consultant could leave, maybe someone's computer, you know, had uh, been broken, a number, number of reasons. But what this allows you when you have all of this data together is for everyone to have this access. There's not going to be any data silos, which is going to, you know, prevent you from seeing all the, the beneficial results. And also in situations where you might have a data audit, it's really important to have this information on hand. So it's so key to have this, um, all this information all in one place, which digital tools allows you to have. Now, what tools are out there? So we have uh, a good few suggestions here on potential digital tools that you could use. We've divided them out into three different phases here. So from the end-to-end -end indicator management, we have the first phase, which is data collection. This is the tools that you're going to be using on the ground um, just to you know, just start to collect this information. 
The second phase is the management and reporting. This is where you bring all the data together. You're going to be setting up you know, your indicators, your KPIs, organizing it, and also reporting. And then finally, you have your advanced BI analysis. So this is when you want to be doing some post analysis on you know, your data, doing more graphics and charts, et cetera, sophisticated analysis. So just to kind of uh, give you an idea of what different tools are on the market, um, we've divided them, as I said, by phases. So under data collection, um, we have, of course, Tola Data. We have our own form building section that you can use for your data collection that are customizable that you can share online. But there's so many others, including ODK, Dimaggi, Kobo Toolbox. We are huge fans of Kobo Toolbox with its offline capacity. Magpie, Social Cops, iPhone Builder, Tarotworks, Google Forms, etc. Um, and I'm sure plenty of you use um, different ones. So in a moment, we're going to be asking you if you can let us know which ones you use, because we'd love to um, see if there's any more on the market. And then secondly, in our second phase, we have management and reporting. Of course, uh, we're going to give ourselves a big mention because this is definitely where we excel in our M&E. But there's obviously different options for you available, such as LogAlto, Dev Results, and Activity Info. And then finally, you have your third phase, which is advanced BI analysis. And there, again, you have you know, a big selection of different tools you can use, such as Power BI, Tableau, Superset, SPSS, and Zoho. So now I'll ask you to input. I'll give you a few uh, seconds to do this, um, to input some data collection tools that you're using. Perfect. Oh, ODK, very nice. And you can just let us know and let others know if they're currently on the market now looking for different digital tools, what has helped you the most? What has been really flexible? What has given you this access to, to work on the field, have offline capabilities, and to really optimize this data collection process? Kobo Toolbox, our favorite as well. Very nice. Excel and Microsoft, very good. Kobo Collect and Comcare. Comcare is also another big one that I hear quite often. Google Forms, yes. Google Forms is also very useful. I know they also do, you know, images and um, yeah, other different features that other other data collection tools do not have usually. Very nice. So oh, that's great. Perfect. Thank you for your feedback there. So now, oh, survey solutions as well. Nice one. We're going to head back now to the stream, I think. Thank you again for all your contributions. And now maybe a lot of you can be overwhelmed by that big selection of, of different digital tools. So I'm going to give you a few pointers that you might keep in mind as you're setting out, you know, to have a look at these different uh, data collection tools and just allow you to see which ones are more adapted to you. Now for the, the first, first point that we have is, I guess, a point of, of self-reflection. It's, it's about you, you know, analyzing your organization. You know, is it a small one? Is it a big one? Is it a large one? Understanding, you know, what sector you're in, what different features do you require? You know, do you need to aggregate any information? Do you have a lot of projects working in parallel? Is this something you're going to be using, you know, on a corporate level, et cetera? It's important that you have a, you know, a very solid definition of everything that you need before you go in, because certain tools are geared towards certain sectors, for example, certain ones are geared towards maybe just in an individual project or multiple ones. So it's really important that you have these all in mind as you're setting out to look for them. The second point that we have is integration. And this is essentially flexibility for you. If you have tools that are quite limited in how they integrate with others, this can be very, I'd say, disabling because at some point or another, maybe one of these applications become out of date or they're no longer you know, working. And what this means is that you might be stuck at some point, um, not being able to pivot or to change to another application that you know will be very useful and beneficial to you. So that is why it's very important that you know that this you know application or these applications can you know integrate and fit with each other very seamlessly, um, just so you're not going to be stuck um, at some point down the line. 
Next thing you want to be considering is the offline versus um, online functionality. You need to be um, sure that, you know, at all these different phases that it really aligns with your needs. So, for example, oftentimes when people want to be doing data collection, this will be in remote areas. This will be in areas of low connectivity. What you'll need to make sure is that these data collection tools are going to be usable offline. Um, then they can be, you know, uh, used to integrate with, you know, an m and &E software that will support low connectivity as you're uploading data, for example. So it's just good to keep in mind, where do you definitely need, you know, offline capabilities? When can you start going online then? The fourth point that we have here is data protection. And this is one to definitely keep in the top of your mind because you're going to be responsible for the raw data and very sensitive data of many potentially vulnerable people. And therefore, as you know, the person responsible, you need to know where the software is based and also um, under what rules it's under. You need to check out the private policy of the software. And additionally, you need to kind of maybe keep in mind the donor requirements that you have. Um, and this is, you know, essential for peace of mind, not only for your donors, but for you, you want to make sure that your, your, you know, your beneficiaries are safe and their data is something that you can have control of. Um, fifthly, um, the user friendliness. Now, when you're transitioning from potentially a paper-based method or, you know, you're heavily based in Excel, this is going to be a major change, you know, for you and your team. It's going to be definitely worth it, but you'll want to make sure that this transition is going to be as seamless as possible. And that's why when you're going to be deciding on which software works best, you wanna make sure that the interface is very easy to navigate, that it's very straightforward, intuitive. And also if you need extra additional help, that there is training available, there's different services, there's general support when you need it. And this will make it so much easier and uh, you know, so much nicer for your team who will then actually want to use it. And you, know, you will have invested in something that will actually be used. So definitely this is a huge element in the success of your project. And then finally, we have cost to set up. Investing in an m and and, you know, data collection tool can sometimes be quite costly. Certain, certain um, people think maybe that they have to do some custom bills for their, for their softwares, but this doesn't need to be the case as there is a lot of different tools out there on the market with many different features. And even though it might be an off the shelf tool, many features can be covered and additionally many custom bills can be provided on top of that so definitely look in the market inquire about you know small custom bills if you need to but don't go out of your way to create an entirely new system for your organization if you don't have to because there's many excellent ones out there on the market already and now we're just going to give you a, a brief overview of what an integrated data cycle um, might look like. We're going to give you um, one from our perspective, as we know it the best, and how it works on Tola Data is. Um, we'll start, of course, with the data collection portion, as this is kind of the beginning of the cycle. Um, here, you know, you can input your data either through our forms um, that we have on our platform. This seamlessly flows into the ME system that we have. You can also use um, an API connection with um, different applications such as Kobo Toolbox, Google Forms, O&A, OneDrive. This is again a super uh, seamless uh, integration that allows you to immediately import these data sets. And then for any other data collection tool, you can always download them as a CSV file and import them onto our m and &E software. Then with Tola Data, of course, you're going to be able to set up your log frames, track your indicators, your KPIs, set up uh, project management, and um, you know be able to disaggregate, et cetera, all of your information and set targets. And then finally, when you're ready for reporting, you can put together some really nice dynamic dashboards that you can share either internally or externally. And if you're interested in doing some advanced um, analysis, you can of course export information and put them into applications such as Tableau or even Power BI. So with that, 
we're actually now going to be going over to the demo portion and we're going to see some great a great project that Anya has set up um, herself um, with regard to gender uh, equality. So I'll pass over to her now and we can see some of the really interesting stuff she's come up with. Thanks, so I'll pass I'm so it. And you can hear me okay there? Yes, I can hear you. Great, so on that last slide there, that's some of the things we will touch on now. Um, so for the por this portion of the demo, we'll be looking at the indicator section. So aggregating and disaggregating indicators, and then also the dashboards. I wish there was enough time to get into the whole Atola data, but we're limited on time. So we'll just give you a brief overview of some of the sections. To begin, when you log into Tola data, this is what you will see. So you can see here a long list of projects, but if I go up here and filter it, I want to look at an SDG project I'm working on, which is the Gender Equality Project. So if I click in there, you will see details on the project. To quickly, quickly give you an overview of the platform, you can see there that was the list of projects. This here is our detail section. So this is an overview of the project of a whole, and as a whole, excuse me. And as I mentioned, this project will be looking at women in education. So starting out adolescent young girls, getting them to sign up to education, to school, and then how that transfers into later life, getting women to sign up to training, then join mentorship programs, and then hopefully go into um, managerial roles and local and national government. So to show you the details of the project, you can see a lot of information here already. Um, this is all configurable. You can see here I've added a description of what we're trying to do with the SDG and the goal we're trying to reach in 2030. An overview of the budget, this automatically updates. If I click into the next tab at the top here, you can see these listed tabs are more for configuration and communication of the project. You can see here our sites. And then as I go on, I won't go into them all. There's different phases. And also another important one here that a lot of organizations are interested in is the team tab. And this team tab is where you can allow different members different access to your organization, just to touch on what I've mentioned about how important data protection is. So this is where you can change the permission level to view only or project admin, which is like a super user. To quickly carry on now, the activity section on the left-hand side here, if I click in there, you can see a lot of information here. This activity section is for people and project management. So you can see the flow of the project. So we're going to get our team together. It's a project for 2023, assemble the team, and then we're going to um, start implementing the trainings, hold weekly meetings with our mentors, data collection, and then evaluation and closure at the end of the year. This is all, you can update this as you go. So um, it is very flexible. And um, the next tabs at the top here, this is just the chart view, and this is an overall look at the project. If I click into the indicator section here, um, I'll just give you a quick look, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So this is really the heart of Tola data. So this is for the management um, of all your indicators and the tracking. The forms here is just similar to Google Forms. So that's one of our data collection tools in Tola data. The data tables here, this is a really important one that Sai was talking about. So this section here is where you can use your offline machine readable sources. So we have Kobo Toolbox, which we love so much in Tola data. We have our Google Sheets, our OneDrive, ONA, and these are all um, uploaded by um, tokens from the platforms. And then again, any machine readable source you can download as a CSV file and then re-upload. And then finally, I'll just click into the dashboards on the left-hand side, but I'll come back to that later on and show you a lovely dashboard I've done out for you. And finally, just to mention, we have guides down here on the left-hand side, and we have our help center here. So if any stage you're in Tola Data and you get stuck, you can go into this chat here and it'll actually be myself, Saiv, or Hannah at the end of that. To go back into the indicator section here, um, I just want to show you a collected data indicator. So you upload the collected data, but when you do that, this is where it automatically updates to. So this is a list of our indicators. But if I click into our results framework, this is where we give the headings for our results framework. 
So you can see here, we have our overarching SDG, which we're trying to reach. And then we have our objective, which is prioritizing employment and leadership roles and well-being of adolescent girls. And then to break that down, we have our three outcomes, which is women in leadership, the gender disparities and um, adolescent girls in education. And then we have those further broken down again. And um, breaking it down like that makes our goals really achievable and it makes the data collection quite easy for people on your team who might be too experienced in m and &E, but it's still very simple to go into our so software and collect data, which I'll show you. Um, quick overview, you can see there are headings, you can see the title, the format, so it can be numeric, percentage or qualitative. You can see how often we have to collect the data, the status of it, so if it's on track, minor delays, um, in progress, open, closed, we can mark that here. And then finally, this is a quick look at the data and we can change this calculation as well. I want to first show you a collected data indicator. So we know it's collected data indicator by this little stack of coins here. So if I click into this indicator here, the number of girls signing up for education. So with this indicator, um, we'll say one of my team members went out monthly and um, in the local community counted the number of girls who want to sign up for education. Um, they did this offline on an Excel form and then downloaded it into a CSV form. Through that, we then uploaded onto this site, um, which is online. And when we do that, there's two ways to add collected data. So it's pulling from a data table or manual entry. And when we pull it from that CSV file, we'll go down here and you can see there that we are choosing um, a few different headings from the data table. So we want the um, females in education and then the number of communities assessed. And then we've broken those down again by disaggregating them by different age groups. So four to six, seven to nine, 10 to 11, all the different age groups, we have then broken that down further. So that's just to show you how easy it is to use other sources and upload them into Tola Data. I'll now pass back to Sive, but I will continue in a few minutes and show you more about the dashboards. Perfect, thanks so much, Anya, that looks fantastic. Uh, so now that Anya has showed you how to put together a, a nice project and how to set up your log frame, your results framework, some great indicators, you might be thinking, well, you know, I can, use the collected data, input it and track it, but what can I do to really push this forward? So what we would actually recommend is you should consider at the start of your project, especially if you're running many different projects concurrently, that you use comparable standard indicators. And these indicators are ones that you could compare very easily with one another. And often they will have the same name, for example. And if we use maybe for example, numbers of beneficiaries reached. This is quite a standard one that you could use across different uh, projects. This allows you to contra uh, sorry, compare and contrast different elements of these indicators together. So with regard to your beneficiaries, you can see, you know, does this impact more males? Does this impact more females? Does this, you know, have influence more over a certain age group or background, et cetera? And then with these indicators, what you can do is these can actually be then aggreg aggregated in systems, especially in Tola data, where you can aggregate this and have an overarching view of the impact you're having across different projects. And this is then something that will be very impactful when you want to report it. And while you're doing that, um, we would recommend that you take a few things into consideration. And one of them um, will be proportional contribution. So this is essentially weighting. So we often use the example, you know, if you have many different projects, but one of these projects um, hits a lot more beneficiaries, you know, benefits a lot more of them, you obviously want to put the weighting more onto this one if it's reaching more people, because that's more reflective of the reality. And then you want to adjust, you know, the different um, weights on these different projects. And then the second, um, thing you want to maybe keep in mind is adjusting um, for over-reporting, under-reporting, or even double counting. And this can occur, especially when you might be running certain programs, certain trainings, and people might attend two different trainings at a time or attend it twice. You just want to make sure that the, you know, 
facts that you or the data that you have reflects the actual reality of um, you know your project. So to just show you how you can do that, how you can bring this data together, aggregate it, disaggregate it, and also report it, um, we're gonna now briefly head back over to Anya and she's gonna show you some fabulous dashboards that she's put together. And um, yeah, I'll pass you over now. Thank you very much, Saif. Um, so to go back into our list of indicators here, I want to show you an aggregated indicator as Saif mentioned. So with our other indicators, we collect data on site. So we log on and manually um, input it um, or upload it by the data table. But then when we have that information on site, we want to um, compare all these indicators. So if I click in here to this overall number of seats held in parliament, national and local governments, um, if I click in here again, you can see the same information similar to the other indicators. If I click up to this targets and disaggregations tab, you can see here we have a target and if it's increasing or decreasing. But the important part I want to show you here is the contributing indicators. So for an aggregated indicator, we don't add any new data onto the site. We just join up the indicators that are already there. So you can see here we are adding the um, number of seats held in local and national parliaments. You can see the two indicators there. And if I click on manage indicators, this is what Saif was speaking about here, the weights and adjustments, which is really important for double counting. Um, if I go back into our indicator list and go down here, I can show you the disaggregated indicator as well. We already touched on that with the different age groups, but I just want to show you again, because it is a really important part of the system and really good for quality data collection. So if I click in here into the targets and disaggregation, you can see here we have our administration regions. So this is looking at the number of seats held by women in local governments. And then we're looking at that through different regions. So my team member, again, Maria, she goes around um, every few weeks and she goes to different sites and counts uh, the amount of women and meets women through the mentorship programs to see who's engaging with these roles. Um, when she does that, she will log back into Tola Data and she will enter the value here and when she collected it. When she does that, she'll go down here and disaggregate that by North, Central or South. And then when she saves that, that will break down the data. And where that is really useful is if I click into the dashboards here, for reporting, this breaks it all down. So when I click into a gender equality report, this is really a great part of Tola data for communicating to the outside world. So I'll show you that graph in a second where we have disaggregated the data. But first of all, just to give you a brief overlook at these dashboards. So you can see here, there's many different indicators. So you can have text and image. Again, this is the text and image one. You can see here, I've added in the contents of what is in this dashboard. And this can be, again, communi communicated with anybody in the outside world. It can be embedded in your website or it can be just shared internally with your team. But the great thing is that whenever you upload data manually or um, through the data tables, this automatically updates these dashboards. So you can see here another text and image wi widget. This here is where we've broken down the female adolescents signing up for education. So we can see there the different age groups. You can see this widget here is a percentage um, actual versus achieved. So this is how many mentors are engaging. This is the way we want to engage. Similar here with the females engaging in training, another text and image. And you can see there's many different graphs. So we can even add line graphs and um, we can add, add here maps of our areas. So you can see there that we're looking at North, Central and South, the flow of the indicators. And this here is our disaggregated indicator that I've just shown you. So there's the North, Central and South, and it has the titles and lots of information you can add. Um, finally, to go up here, if I click into the details, that's just more information on it. The settings tab, this is where you can share your dashboard with the outside world. 
And again, data protection, you can turn that off and on so that if you only want them to see it for a period of time, that is okay. You can turn that toggle off and that will reset the link so they won't have access to it. Another nice element of these dashboards is that you can change the colors. So if you want to change it to a particular organization you're working it with, that's really possible with this. And then finally, with the team, this is where, again, data protection is really important. So you can add team members to this or you can allow them to edit it as well. So it can be view only or edit access or no view at all. Um, finally, I'm just going to copy this link and I think even my colleague Hannah might have it. So she'll be able to share it with you so you can see what the dashboard will look like from an outside body without a license for the platform. And with that, I can hand back to Saiv again and she can finish up this Perfect. presentation. So yeah, just as uh, Anya said, you can find that link to that really, really lovely dashboard in the uh, comment section. So definitely check it out. And now, I if you have enjoyed um, what you've seen, if you've liked the platform, we warmly welcome you to go on to toledata.com and to try out our 30 day free trial. This is with no strings attached. You can invite many users onto the platform with you to explore, to feel out you know, the different features, see if it works for you. And additionally, you know, if at some point in the future you decide to work with us, know that we have a commitment towards the NGO sector and we'll give you 50% off. And if you are also maybe a small grassroots organization and, you know, the prices seem a bit overwhelming to you and um, be in touch with us. We do have certain programs that can help you as well. Also use these digital collection tools. So don't be a stranger. Please reach out. So with that. We're now going to bring you back to Menti again once more, and this is going to be your opportunity to head over to you know, bring out all the different questions that maybe have gone through your mind as you were watching this presentation. Uh, there was a lot to cover in quite a short amount of time. So I'm sure if you know we've missed anything, please let us know. We'd be happy to drill down more on uh, things that you have in your mind. And also, um, you know, if you're not comfortable telling us now any questions, feel free to you know contact us um, via info at toledata.com or via LinkedIn. Um, just reach out. We'll be happy to help. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. That was a very quick stop look at the Tola Data platform during the demo. There is a lot more to it. So you can even book in with another demo with us and we'll give you a more in-depth look and you can ask questions, big, bring along more people from your organization. Thank you. Nice presentation. Thanks. <laughs> um, so yes, definitely get in touch with us. And even similar to the community support program, just get in touch with us. We are a um, social tech organization. So we want to be there to help you on your ME journey. And um, our first question came in there. So I Perfect. You want to yeah, absolutely. So thank you. What about data collection when I don't have internet connection? So yeah, great point. And that is something we um, briefly touched on in the webinar. And this is about yeah knowing what data collection tools can really help you if you're in these remote locations with low connectivity. So what we highly recommend, you've heard us saying many times before, is applications such as Kobo. There are more, but Kobo definitely is a very flexible and sophisticated tool. This digital data collection tool allows you to collect information on the field with no data. And this is something then you can use to provide data for different m and &E software, such as Tola data, and upload at a later time when you do have a little bit of internet connection. Perfect. So I think then we're ready for another question. If you wouldn't mind, Hannah, flicking downward, I think. Yeah, perfect. Thanks so much. The technology element of it still. Yeah. <laughs> it goes into play two, two years after COVID. Um, how much is the subscription? So as we mentioned, it is 50% off for NGOs. So for two licenses, it starts at 49 euro. Um, that can go up to um, however many people are in your organization. Um, and then that's 99 euro if you're not an NGO. But as mentioned with the community support program, that goes down to 19 euro a month for two licenses. 
And with that as well, you also have the free support, free support from the um, customer success team, myself and Sive. Um, so we'll be on hand to answer any of your questions. And yeah, get in touch. There is criteria that you have to reach to be eligible for the community support program. But yeah, get in touch. We definitely, definitely want to help and get you on board with Tola Data. Yeah, no, well said. Yeah. Oh, I think another one has come in. Perfect. Um, thank you for the good presentation. I collect data involving people under 18, so cannot input this into a platform like this. It is too sensitive. Great point. And I'm glad to see that you're very protective of your um, participants' um, data. It is so important to be aware of the you know, vulnerability of individuals under 18. We often work with organizations. I'll mention Am Digital, for example, that you know are great for case management if that is the work that you're involved in, who anonymize data. But then, of course, there's other different um, online uh, data collection tools that allow you to anonymize, I can't say that correctly, um, mm -hmm. the data of these individuals. So this is really important, especially when you're using m and &E softwares like Tola Data, because it's important that this data is anonymized ahead of time so that you do um, protect this information. But this is something that can be done. So if you do want to use an m &E software, you can anonymize um, online via digital tool, or there's many other different tools out there that help you do this. And you can use it on an m &E platform that you trust, that you know where it's based, you understand you know, the private policy, and this again aligns with your donor requirements. So you shouldn't be limited in that regard. I will mention on that as well that only you have access to your organization and then you can allow the participants in your information to see different projects. So even the team here at Tola Data, if we want to access your account, we have to get written permission to then set up account if for support, but many organizations allow us and some don't. So there's also that element of it as well, that only you will be able to see the information in your account. Absolutely, um, great point. You might have another question there. Yeah. Can I make my permissions of my colleagues? That's just what we were actually hitting on there is that um, there is a team section in Tola Data. We can change the permission that they can be view only where they can only view the information. They can be data entry where they can enter the data. So say for um, entry level colleagues that just enter the data, but they can't delete it. Um, and then we have um, the project admin, which is like the super user over it. Um, so there's many different permissions. Um, so that is definitely, definitely possible. Um, Perfect. Sure any more questions coming in? We might leave it a minute. Maybe something will germ up as you're reading these other questions. But as we said, um, we're always available. So again, if something happens after the webinar and you curse yourself for not having asked it, you can always get in touch and we'll be more than happy to, yeah. to um, respond. Very eager. And something I didn't mention as well is that we even have a YouTube channel with helpful videos. We have a knowledge base on our website and a quick start guide, which is like a, a PDF walkthrough of each step. And then we have the guides, which is a step-by-step -step guide if you click in it when you're on the platform. And then we also have myself and Sive. I know sometimes it's nicer to speak, be able to speak to people and Definitely. get some feedback rather than just looking online. Um, Definitely. And I think that kind of answers the, the following question that we just got in there of recommending the best ways of using the free trial. Um, I guess just to add, um, definitely use the YouTube. I think you have mentioned that I'm definitely a visual person, so I do need to watch someone, you know, doing all of these different actions. So I highly recommend the YouTube video tutorials. And um, in addition, use also, you know, all of the, the features such as, you know, adding as many colleagues as you want. There's going to be um, no limit and um, try everything out and even get us maybe on a demo and we can give you an overview of how to, to use anything if you need just a, a quick um, guide and use all of those great resources that Anya just mentioned that you'll find on our website on the, around the bottom of the page. That's a good point you touched on there as well, Saif, that with your free trial, if you sign up on toladata.com, there's no limit to the amount of users you can have for that 30 days. So you can add everybody in your organization, they can get into the platform, have a look at the pro projects you're setting up. And then when you go into your paid license, 
that is when you can choose who has the license and who doesn't. So for the free trial, everybody is able to get into the software and have a play around, which I think is really important that you want everybody in your team familiar and kind of even just knowledgeable about what the side of ME, because it is such an important part of running um, organizations. Absolutely. And free trials are so helpful for you before a big investment into, you know, a uh sometimes a very expensive tool and you want to know does this work does this work for your organization are you going to be able to harmonize this information so yeah make full use of free trials whenever you see them across different platforms that would definitely be my recommendation i know i do anyway yes (laughs) does tola data partner with consultants thanks for the presentation ah thank you um yes we absolutely partner with consultants we um work with a few different organizations um currently at the moment and uh we work together to ensure that the um that you know the clients that we have will get the most informative information and will also have help as they're you know using tola data and our platform um we also have a referral program if you're a consultant as well if you want to you know get some additional benefits from being able to refer different clients that you have at the moment um that is something that if you'd like to learn more about um do let us know and we can forward you that on um but please get in touch um we have uh, individual relationships with all of our consultants and you know um we're we're very keen to to work with as many as we can oh perfect we've got the referral program down here at the bottom if you want to check that out as well perfect great and then yeah the referral program there um as we mentioned at the start as well our total data is quite a small team so with things like the referral program it's kind of word of mouth we're a small company but we do, do listen to feedback um i will have people on the chat and giving me ideas for the software and then we pass them on to our dev team so we're always learning and always growing as a platform as well which i think is really important that we're kind of feels like we're in it together and feels like we're kind of supposed to doing something good for in in the tech space um thank you how can i contact for partnership so this can be done through info at toladata.com um but you can also email us directly i'm anya at toladata.com um, so you can contact me directly and I can put you in touch with um, even our CEO, Joe, and then you can get that ball rolling. But I would say sign up for this free trial and you can begin that way. Perfect. OK, yeah, you have also our emails yeah. down here at the bottom. If you want to contact us directly, perhaps the info app might be the easiest. I know we don't have the, the best uh, rememberable names. Um, so you always have the info at toledata.com. But yeah, please get in touch with us individually as well if you if you want to talk directly to someone. And yeah, um, yeah perfect. Thank you for those questions. Um, yeah. We'll then leave just maybe 30 more seconds. And if we don't hear from anyone, um, we can end it there. But we've really enjoyed getting in touch with you. We hope this is not the end of this uh, dialogue. We, again, as Anya had mentioned, we learn so much from the experience, from the expertise of uh, different organizations from different sectors. And we want to definitely learn more about the projects and initiatives that you have for gender equality. Um, Again, this is something that is super important. And we're, you know, always uh, hoping to improve our website and our platform for people and expand the features that you can uh, use. And this is, again, informed so heavily on your real life experience. So thank you very much. And um, yeah, I'm wishing you a lovely day. Thank you, Anya, again for coming along, too. It was great to have you. Thanks, everybody, for joining. And I hope that we see some free trial signups today and then we will be in touch and hopefully continue your M&E journey. And yeah, thanks a million. Perfect. Nice one. See you guys. Talk soon. Bye.